There's a really dangerous cycle that happens with technology every couple of years, and it's something that doesn't get a lot of attention. Nowadays, when companies release new products, they love to tell you about how eco-friendly the creation of it was. But the thing that almost every single tech company neglects is the end of life for those products. Because a tech product, whether it's a phone, a laptop, a tablet, a smartwatch, or even a car, is going to have this cycle of death and rebirth. Let me break it down. It's day one. The Apple event is unfolding. You're seeing new devices before your very eyes. They get into the hands of reviewers who test and compare them against the older models and question whether you should or should not upgrade. That's the phase that YouTube likes to focus on because that's the exciting, innovative, and new part. But then after that, there's a second wind for those devices. For example, here's an M1 MacBook Air. This is a four-year-old laptop, and that means it is prime for its second wind. Maybe you wanted to get the new M3 MacBook Air or upgrade to a MacBook Pro, but you've still got this perfectly usable MacBook Air, so where does it go? Well, you're probably either going to give it to a family member, sell it on eBay or Craigslist, or just trade it in for your newer device, in which case it'll probably end up on Apple's refurbished store or on Amazon. But the important part is that this device is not going to a landfill. It's going to be reused probably for several years to come. But what happens after that? Well, those are devices like these that are about six to 10 years old and they still work. They're still usable to some degree, but they probably have some limitation. Like this MacBook Pro has a butterfly keyboard, which is pretty much hated. And this one only has four gigabytes of RAM. So these are devices that are kind of on the cusp of usability. And a lot of devices in this age bracket tend to be corporate or educational. Whether it's a Mac or a PC or an iPad, seven to 10 years is when a lot of companies will start to turn their inventory and you end up with a flood of machines like these that have lived corporate lives, probably not the easiest ones out there, and they end up flooding the secondhand market and destroying the value of these computers. And that's when the next phase happens. It's the obsolescence phase. These computers are probably 12 to almost 20 years old at this point, and there's really not a lot of useful life left in them. Now, if you come and watch my channel, then you'll know that there's a lot that you can still squeeze from even really old machines like this, but given that there are literally millions upon millions of these devices, and not all of them are going to be restored and used, this is the time period where we start to see e-waste a lot. And the time frame that I've given you so far is just for laptops. For phones, it's a lot shorter. I mean, if you wanna go on eBay and buy an iPhone 12, these things are still perfectly usable devices that people have every day. They're in their second wind. But I could go out any day of the week and buy a pile of iPhone 7s because nobody cares about these things anymore. And if they break, it's not even worth fixing. This is the dark period for technology because nobody cares at all. But what really amuses me is what comes after. If you go on eBay right now and try to buy an iPhone 6, you'll find literally piles of them for pennies on the dollar. But what about the original iPhone from 2007? Well, good luck trying to find one of these in nice working condition for less than a hundred bucks. The original iPhone has come full circle. It's now a collector's item that people desire and will even grade based on the iOS version it's running and the condition it's in. And this phenomenon is starting to spread to other early iPhones. Like take the iPhone 5, for example. If you have one of these in nice condition that's running iOS 6, you'll find that its value is gonna shoot up dramatically because people are coveting that old iOS iPhone 5 aesthetic again. And it's the same with Macs as well. Try to buy an early Intel MacBook worth literally 15, 20 bucks tops. But a nice titanium power book from the early 2000s, these things can fetch more money than Retina MacBook Pros because they're cool, collectible, and interesting. They can run old versions of software that you couldn't run on something modern, and they're just filled with nostalgia for a lot of people. And the thing is, once a piece of tech becomes collectible, it doesn't really lose that status. I mean, take a look at this PowerBook 100. This thing is 
33 years old, and you still have an entire support network for these older Macs. Companies have sprung up to provide parts and even upgrades for stuff like this. This particular PowerBook, for example, has a rebuilt battery that I bought off of eBay, and it runs on an SD card thanks to a device called the Blue Scuzzy, which is a Raspberry Pi based emulator that allows you to continue to use these older machines whose hard drives are dying. It's basically the horseshoe theory for tech. You have new shiny devices, secondhand devices, and then you have e-waste, and it comes out the other side being collectible. It's not just Macs either. There's entire networks of support for old Ataris. Even early PlayStation and Xboxes have fan groups. Heck, even those digital cameras that all got completely deprecated by the smartphone are coming back now. And so it's really sad to me when you see photos like this. These piles and piles of e-waste, devices that nobody cares enough about to even test if they work. I've dealt with sellers in China before that have so many devices, even of more recent phones, that it's not even worth the time and effort to plug in a lightning cord and see if it boots up. The question really is, what do we do about it? And the number one thing is to just keep your old devices. And I'm guilty of this too. If I see an iPhone 7 sitting around, I'm probably thinking, okay, it's on iOS like 14 or something, probably has a pretty bad battery, and I don't really care about this in the slightest. But over the years, I've had so many devices like this that I've sold or donated, and I really wish that I had kept them because now they do have that nostalgic value for me. And I'd rather it take up space in my drawer than take up space in a landfill. But that's just one piece of a really big and complicated puzzle that really none of us are qualified to solve. Because it's really up to the manufacturers to make sure that the end of device is as clean as the creation of it. And while I appreciate the things Apple is doing to make their impact on the environment less when they build their products, they're not doing enough to dispose of these things responsibly. Just the other day, I saw this tweet of a pile of prototype AirPods that were destroyed in the production process, many of which are burned or melted because of the thermal runaway from the batteries when they get crushed in a compactor. So at a certain point, there's nothing that you or I can really do. I mean, we can use our devices as long as they live, we can extend their life through repair and upgrade, but at some point, the clock will run out on most of the devices that are being made now. It's common knowledge now that plastic recycling is mostly a lie, with more than 80% of plastic recyclables not actually being recycled. But for technology, those things just aren't as known about. What is the exact percentage of this phone that can be recycled? I don't know. Some estimations are that only 15% of mobile phones are recycled, with as many as 150 million phones being discarded each year. So I hope that this video provides some perspective more than anything. There's of course always things that you can do on an individual level to reduce the amount of e-waste that you generate, but at a certain point, it's not really in our control as consumers. The best thing that we can do is lobby for legislation that supports right to repair and right to recycle and to put your money where your mouth is. Companies like Framework exist specifically because there is a demand. Companies like iFixit exist because people want to fix their own things rather than buying new ones. It's proof that the demand is there, just basic economics and demanding that companies be more responsible can only get us in the right direction. So I hope that you will keep this video in mind in the future, and if you do like it, and if you did find it helpful, I would appreciate, and if, it, and if you did find it helpful, definitely leave a like down below, and don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.